Kurt Gibson. You know the name. You know the home run. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. But when a swing so improbable turns a man into a legend, some of the details get lost. So instead of waxing poetic again about that impossible home run, pull up a chair and hear from his teammates how he changed them, how he motivated them, and how he turned them into champions. A legend of Dodger baseball, Kurt Gibson. Well, the first time I really remember meeting Kirk was in spring training. He signed kind of late, kind of fell into our laps. Certainly didn't expect it, but it happened just before spring training. So first time we met him was down in Vero Beach. Well, the backdrop is that Fred Clare was really getting ripped on by the media for not making many moves to improve the team from 87 to 88. But then he made the trade for Alfredo Griffin, for Mike Davis, and the, the crowning blow was really the Gibson signing. It was second look free agency, and Gibby was out there for a few days, and then all of a sudden he was a Dodger, and it really injected a lot of energy in the whole roster. He called me just after he signed. He was back in Los Angeles. I think he was looking for a place to live, and he asked if I'd take him to a workout club. So I took him to Sports Club LA, and there was a basketball game going on, and we're about a month from going to spring training. And he says, let's put our name in, let's go and, uh, and play basketball against these guys. You know, I thought we were signing a baseball player, but I think we signed one of the Detroit Piston uh, bad boys. I mean, he just took over the game and we played for about an hour because he just wouldn't lose. We all knew that he was a really good athlete and he had a lot of fire in him. And that's, I think, one thing that attracted Fred Clare to attaining Gibson was because of the, uh, his competitive nature. He just handled his business on the baseball field. I, I'm not here trying to make new friends. I'm here to play ball. And uh, because of that, he became a big leader on our ball club. I think everybody saw through the league that, you know, he, uh, he, was, a, he was a gamer. And we knew that he was not gonna sit there and just like, you know, pout over a, a bad swing or something like that. You know, he, he would dig in and, and he'd be ready to, to play ball every pitch, every game. He played left field like uh, an NFL linebacker. He played hard. He's kind of a leadership by example. He just goes out and plays hard, never takes a pitch off. And all of that was very, very important to our club. The eye black incident was uh, quite a uh, a day. Kirk was doing his running on the left field line and when he came back some fans and players were laughing at him and there happened to be a black streak on his head and that set him off. I know Kirk Gibson wanted to hurt somebody that day. <laughs> he wasn't a very happy camper and even though they were playing a game or playing a joke on him, it wasn't very funny to him at the time. I was already gone, so I don't even know what happened after that. I came back that night to go have dinner and I run into Mike Sosha and his wife. Sosha goes, hey Jess, did you hear about Gibby? And I go, what happened? He goes, Gibby blew up, man. He went crazy. So I go, Sosha, I gotta tell you, I'm the one that put eye black in his forehead. And he went berserk, started laughing. He go, oh man, he's gonna freaking kill you tomorrow. I just told Jesse, I said, Jesse, he, he might kill you. You gotta be careful. And it really didn't get solved until the next day. Tommy did a great job talking to him, calming him down, bring him in the clubhouse. Kirk did a great job saying, I'm not going into that clubhouse with those guys unless they get to hear what's on my mind and what I've felt and where are we headed as a team. And that was the beginning of his, his leadership. It was an eye opener because what, we'd been only in spring training only a short period of time. So it was a big deal. I didn't think it was at the time, but it was a big deal. It was hilarious. Hey, we won the World Series somehow. With Gibby, he was pretty cool about it right after it all happened. He goes, hey, I'm ready to play ball. And that's all that mattered. Mm -hmm. 
I think that the 88 team doesn't happen without him. I don't think my streak happens without him. What he brought on a daily basis as an example in the locker room, he changed the priority list, I think. Kirk battled injuries uh, during the season, just minor stuff and in the playoffs too, but uh, when he got hurt against the Mets, uh, you know, naturally, you know, it's, you're concerned. And uh, to, to lose a guy like Kirk was, um, you know, was, was huge. We knew it was huge. You know, we knew when, when we went to the World Series and Gibby wasn't going to be there that obviously our heart and soul was out. But, you know, it's kind of like pick it up and, and, and do your thing. It is ironic that the Dodgers, in waiting before the first ball to be thrown out, showed some highlights of the season and the bulk of the highlights, the dramatic contributions of Kirk Gibson, who will not be in the starting lineup and was not introduced. He was back in the trainer's room getting some aid. I happened to be in the uh, training room. He was on the table. And all I was doing was picking up towels off the floor and we had Vince Scully come over the loudspeaker and saying that we'll be without the services of Kirk Gibson tonight. And the minute he heard that, he just told me, go get my uniform. So I did, I went and got his uniform, brought it back to him and kind of the next was history. Well, I made the first out of that inning. So I'm sitting back there and I'm just, you know, a little upset that I didn't get a, a better at bat. And then I kind of see this shadow move past me. I didn't really even notice he was on the bench. And all of a sudden, I, I just see the number 23, and I go, where is he going? And look who's coming up. When he came rolling out of that dugout, man, the stadium erupted. If you had to be there, the whole stadium erupted. And I guarantee you, he tapped into that energy that they were giving him. And then, you know, I mean, you can't even, can't even imagine that you hit the ball out of the ballpark. I think everyone remembers that home run. That home run is, is the most exciting baseball moment that I've ever been around. I think a lot of people can say the same. But really, when you think of Kirk and what he meant for our team, it's the little things that he did, the way he never took a pitch off, the way he broke up a double play, the way he took an extra base, the way he played left field. That was the impact of Kirk, along with the spectacular things that he did, the home run you know, off of Roger McDowell in New York to win game four, and, uh, and then obviously the home run against uh, Dennis Eckersley. You know, in LA, there's a reputation that we're really good. We play for the Dodgers. We've got the beautiful, clean, white uniforms. He made it cool to get down and dirty. He made it cool to show that you were disappointed in what just happened. He'd come into the dugout and, and throw his helmet under the bench and have it rattle around. He'd go down in the tunnel and be swearing and hitting the wall with his bat and shatter his bat. He made it cool to be intense and not afraid to show your teammates and the fans how hard he was trying, and that gave everybody else permission to try that hard. You know, what a team. We've been saying it all year, and if it wasn't for my teammates, I wouldn't even have got the opportunity to, to remember this moment. Hey, Gibby. Um, tell you what, it's great talking about you today, and I'm um, so happy for you to be uh, honored in this fashion. Nobody deserves it more than you did and the effect that you had on so many people, your teammates and, and everybody around you. So congratulations, my friend. And uh, we're all pulling for you, brother. Take care. We love you, man. And we appreciate all that you did and, and for being our team leader that year and staying true to who you are. Thanks again, because we are forever we are forever connected in history by our by a year that we had that will never be forgotten. God bless you, and um, again, congratulations. Kirk, uh, you're a good friend. I wanna thank you for everything that you contributed to, uh, to my career and bringing all of our, our play to a different level. This honor is well-deserved. I know you uh, love playing the game and you didn't play for any reason other than to win. And that's what was important to you. Uh, 
Uh, so congratulations on this great honor. God bless you, and it's well deserved. Just want to congratulate you and let you know what an honor it was uh, being a teammate and a friend, uh, being able to play with you for those couple of years. Kurt, thanks for being on that team that year. Uh, that was a fun year, and uh, you, were, you were the man that year. You, you made it all happen. You're, you're a great man, and I, I've, always, I've always loved you, buddy. All right? You be well, and uh, I'll see you soon. Gibby, um, what an impact you've made on the world, you've made on the Dodger organization, and you've made on me. And I thank you for every day that you changed me and you impacted us. And uh, it wasn't one swing. It was the way and the way you still do live your life. And I hope that every day that you walk this earth that you remember how much you have done for us. And we thank you very much.